Now what we're going to do is we're going to be changing the gear oil. Okay, the first thing I've done is I've raised the engine to the full upright position, the trailering position. I went inside and I emptied the oil or the gear lube from the monitor. What we have to do here is we have to remove the monitor. Simple strap pulls across. You can just set that down. The monitor lifts out of its cradle and then we have to dump it in place into a container. Pull the monitor cap in a nice place where I can remember it. Tip this to the side. You have to be careful for the wires that are on the bottom of the monitor. I'm going to stand it back up. i got a little spill here, so I'm going to clean that up. Actually, the lid first. I'm going to put the lid back on. And the strap. So I don't forget it, and I know where it is. Okay, so now what I'm getting ready to do is loosen up this uh, screw under here. Uh, because the uh, motor will move to the side when you push on it, I'm getting underneath, I'm going to wedge my knee against the motor, get the screwdriver in here, and get a good grip on that. And then you just feel it sort of crack and let go. As I'm loosening it, I can sort of feel a couple of particles there. I'll move my rag out of the way, take that all the way out. Now there's a washer on here, I want to watch out that I don't lose that. And here I've got gear loop coming out already. Now you notice in there there's a magnet on the end and you can see some of the particles have gathered onto the end of this. And there's the end of that after I cleared it off. So there's a little washer that I pulled out. Okay, now here I'm going for this top screw. Get your screwdriver in. Again, a large blade screwdriver is better than a smaller blade. I'm going to use a rag here to get a good grip. Leaning right in on it, turning. Once I open this, the oil uh, gear lube should be draining out of the bottom a lot quicker. I open this, and then the gear lube starts to come out the bottom. Got the washer in there again. I'm going to reach in and grab that with just the tip of my screwdriver. Careful not to damage it. Actually, that one's in place real nice. I think I'm just going to leave it there. This one came out nice and small, not as long as the other one. And notice it doesn't have the little uh, metal magnet portion. Okay, now I've got that right level with the ground. You can see it's still draining out the bottom there. Now that almost all the gear lube is drained out of the lower unit, what we're going to do is we're going to use the Merck Cruiser gear lube pump and we're going to fill it up from the bottom until we see it in the vent hole. To assemble the gear lube pump, once you remove it from the container, then you're going to take the uh, plastic and you're going to stick it inside the top part and this allows the gear lube to get right down to the lower portions of the uh, of the gear lube um, containers. For this operation, we're going to be using Merck Cruiser High Performance Gear Lube, uh, designed specifically for Merck Cruiser uh, stern drives. Okay, so now we're going to remove the protective cap. You want to put that in a safe place. Then we have a threaded portion here that's going to go into the lower drain hole. When you're threading this, be careful that you're not stripping the threads that are under there. As you're turning it, you can see the whole plastic assembly is going to turn along with you. And you simply go along till it stops. Once again, do not over tighten or you'll be stripping the threads. I'm now going to take this and put it inside the uh, Merck Cruiser gear lube. Insert the pump assembly in and simply tighten the lid. Now what we're going to do is as we pump, we should see the Merck Cruiser uh, gear lube start to go through the tube. It takes a couple of uh, pumps to prime it and you can see the lube is now going down through. Now this takes almost two full liters of gear lube so we're going to pump this bottle through and then we're going to have to change the uh, pump assembly from one bottle to the next and the way you accomplish that is you're simply going to be putting the uh, plug in the vent hole at the top to create an airlock. Okay, so on that last pump I felt a little air, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the plug in the top. Now I'm going to put this plug in the top here. Again, I don't have to tighten it, I'm just trying to create an airlock here so that I can change bottles. So 
So just until that screw is snug up against the washer. Okay, so now I've already prepped my second bottle. I've taken the cap off. I'm going to be careful that that doesn't fall over. I'm going to unscrew this. Remove the assembly. You can still see that there's gear lube inside the stick. Placing it inside the second bottle. Tighten it up. Now I'm going to remove the screw and continue to pump until I see it coming out the vent. In each pump I'm having a good little look at the vent hole, waiting to see when the gear lube comes out. Of course it takes uh, just a little over 1.8, almost 1.9 liters. One more pump and there it is, it's starting to flow. There we go, we're putting the screw in now. Little lube leaked out. Sure I need my screwdriver. And the washer was already in place, you want to make sure that was there. Once again, I'm just tightening this lightly, and I'll go back and torque it up. Okay, so now that I'm going to pump, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the cap, place it aside, and then I'm going to start pumping until I see the gear oil show up in the uh, reservoir. Okay, I've been pumping for a while now. What I'm going to do is remove the strap to get a better look. And we're still pumping. In this sequence, I've increased the speed so you can see the fluid rise within the chamber. As the little washer reaches the top, slow down because you'll get increased resistance against your pump. Okay, so now I've placed the strap back on and the cap to uh, make an airlock, and I'm going to go put the plug in. I'm going to remove this attachment point and screw this back in. As we get near the end, I'm getting my screw ready. And I have the washer on there as well. Plugs in. I'll just do it hand tight and then I'll be raising the uh, lower unit. Okay, now that I've got the lower unit in the upright position, I'm once again going to tighten up the screw. And leaning in with my knee. Okay, so now we're back inside. We're going to top up the gear oil here. Take the lid off. I'll use that to create the seal. Move my lid here. Cap on here. Cap on there. And we're done. So now that we've changed the gear lube, let's recap. First step is to raise the stern drive to up and out. Empty the monitor reservoir. Remove the lower and upper drain plugs in that order. Lower the stern drive and let the lube drain out. Pump the lube up from the bottom until visible in the vent hole then replace the upper vent plug. Continue to pump the lube until visible in the monitor reservoir. Replace the lower fill plug, and last but not least, top up the monitor reservoir. Well folks, there you have it. I just finished my 20 hour servicing on my Merc Cruiser Alpha 1 and uh, changing the motor oil. Uh, it was quite an experience. I learned a few things. Uh, one, I want to have a bigger screwdriver. First thing I'll be doing after I get this boat out on the water is I'll be checking my fluid levels after we get up to operating temperatures, and if required, I'll top them up a little bit. Uh, if I can do this, you can do this. I hope you all learned something from us. I'm done. Thanks very much.